Ahoy, my friends! Oh, ahoy! How are you today? Alright, it's time for another adventure, huh? It's a little early for this, but I don't know why I picked it up, but I'm excited about it. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon. I am Cap and Raz, and uh, it's Father's Day. How about that, huh? When's the last time you had Father's Day? 365 days or so ago? Right? Sorry, I have... hold on a second. Hold on, I... Just want to make sure I can see myself over here. There's no, I mean, this is the only way I, I make sure that, that, that the voyage is together and I forgot to do it. Okay, we're good to go over here now. Uh, yeah, it's Father's Day. Um, I did it wrong again. How many times, I have done this before, hold on. You know, let me tell you something, Twitch is a nightmare. Okay, I got it now. Thank you, sorry about that. Great start, huh? Should I restart it? Nah, that'd take too much work, right? All right. So happy Father's Day to you uh, fathers out there. And um, happy Father's Day to everyone else. Because it's kind of a it's kind of a fun day, you know, Father's Day for most people. Uh, if your dad's still around and you're still talking. <laughs> it's, good. it's a good way to put it, huh? Uh, you know, dads don't expect too much. Um, you know, there's that whole cliche, you know, dads end up with a whole bunch of ties. You know, dads don't care. I think, um, I'm not a parent, but I would assume that, you know, Father's Day and Mother's Day, it's gotta be just like a breath of relief, because it's like one of the one days out of the year that you really don't have to put yourself last. You know what I'm saying? And man, if anybody was good at putting themselves last, it's my father. Uh, he is one of those guys that just... I, I've always put it as he's a tough act to follow. He's a tough act to follow because he always seems to be able to keep doing something productive. Like, all the time. Let me give you an example of uh, what I usually get him for Father's Day. I usually get him uh, like a, a gift certificate, a gift card to Menards. Because I feel like the gift, there's the one holiday out of the year that you can kind of, you know, get away with the gift card. is, is Mother's Day and Father's Day. Because if anything, you're saying, look, I don't want to screw them on the one day that's theirs. So at least get them something that I can be sure they're going to want. And you're and 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 you know of all the stores, I, I get him Menards because it's like the 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 holidays around June, and for whatever reason, he's one of these people who enjoys going out and you know fixing his lawn, and uh, making everything looks nice. Uh, he's one of these guys who's always got got the, the the lawn mowed just right and the flowers done. You know, and like I said, it's a it's a tough act to follow. My father, he's always put himself first, and um, that that includes uh, recreationally, especially recreationally. I mean, it's he's never the kind of guy who's like, I want to do this. I think he gets a little grumbly if he he, he doesn't have some food in his stomach. But other than that, he's pretty much open to anything. And a fine example of this is is uh, just recently. He went on down to Florida. Now, last October, he went to Florida with me and my sister, mother, you know, family trip. We went down to Disney, had a blast. And then just recently, I believe him and my mom went down there to see friends. Down there for a couple weeks. And again, sure, they had fun. But there's one place in Florida that I know he wants to go to more than anywhere else. And I just recently learned this a couple years ago. Um, when I moved to Indianapolis, big racing town here, and I really started to realize that he's very much into racing. He's always been a good mechanic. Did a little uh, mechanic work in the war. He's always been someone who's always been, uh, you know, he works on his car in the driveway, that kind of guy. Um, knows the right shop to take it to. You know, knows the right prices to get if your your car's broken, that kind of thing. But just recently, you know, past couple of years, I realized his passion 
an interest in racing. And when we were here at Indianapolis, seeing in the Indianapolis 500, he started telling me about if there's anywhere he ever wanted to go to see racing, it would be the stock car racing slash NASCAR racing down in Daytona, Florida. And so he goes down to Florida every so often, very, very seldomly. He'll go, and he's usually with someone else, or he's seeing other people, and he never even once says, look, if we're going to go all the way down there, we're going to Daytona, because I want to go. Now, one day, maybe he's going to get that trip. I really hope so. Um, maybe I'll be lucky enough to take part in it. We'll see, but for today... At the very least, we'll take him down to Florida via Daytona, USA for the PlayStation 3. Now, those of you who are familiar with Daytona, USA, an extremely popular uh, Sega racing game, stock car racing game from about 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you're, you're probably balking at me when I say Daytona, USA on the PlayStation 3. Why? Because this game is really known for uh, the arcade, and it's also really known for being on the Sega Saturn, which we have over here today. We brought in a beat up old little Saturn, we pulled it out of the hole, for those of you who don't really know what one is. And uh, a Sega Saturn is basically the original PlayStation's competition. This is kind of like Nintendo 64 era. Original PlayStation. This is right after the Sega CD, the, the system that came out um, pretty much after the Sega Genesis. This was the follow-up. And, you know, by most accounts, it wasn't very successful. Uh, it had a real rushed, um, rushed uh, premiere, and it didn't last very long. It left a great wake of excellent games behind. Games that are extremely expensive and hard to get a hold of for the most part these days. Uh, but, you know, a fun little system nonetheless. And one of its most well, but hands down, it one of its most well known games. I mean, really, I can't think of a game more synonymous with the Sega Saturn than Daytona USA. Daytona USA. Just, you know, an arcade racer. You got the Hornet there. Very bare bones uh, game. It's got three tracks. It's got two cars. And uh, it's got one of the most... One of the most amazing soundtracks in, in video game history. We'll get into that a little later. But, you know, this game was all over the Saturn. I mean, let's take a look. This was... Uh, you had the original copy here. You had this copy, which any Sega Saturn... Anybody trying to get into the Sega Saturn cheap? Grab this. It's around 15 bucks, and you get Virtual Fighter 2, you get Virtual Cop, a, light, a great light gun game, and then Daytona USA. When I finally found a Sega Saturn sitting in the thrift store one day, I bit the bullet, bought this for about 10 bucks um, off eBay. And you know, what do you got in here? You got the games, you know, with just the sleeve, and then there's an instruction manual in here, too. It's always the last one, right? Yeah, so pretty bare bones, but, you know, good starter for Saturn. Uh, and then, eventually, they came out with, this was kind of an expansion, maybe a Game of the Year edition, if you will. The Daytona USA Champion Circuit Edition. This one's a little harder to find. A little more expensive. Uh, looks like it's got a couple more courses here, and then it's got eight cars. So, and then did they have, yeah, I think this one's actually two-player. I don't think Daytona was. Just boring the hell out of you? Are you into racing games? Look, most people aren't. I get it. I mean, this is, there's 10 million racing games out there, but there's something about Daytona. And you're going to see, and it really, you'll, uh, you'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll see why it's fun. Uh, that makes you just kind of want to race just a little bit. It's uh, it's fast, clean. I see somebody in the chat here, by the way. I'm just, if you could tell me if you, I'm getting audio today. I'm having a little bug over here, 
in uh, my readout station. I'm not sure how my audio is, how, how my audio is, so let me know if you can't hear me, okay? Anyway, usually I don't like to break the fourth wall like this, but I don't want to go, you know, knee deep into an adventure and find out we don't have audio, right? Okay, so uh, let's do it. It's uh, Daytona USA. We're going to do this for Dad. We're going to do this for my dad. And, uh, you know, I think this is pretty good with most dads. I think most dads are into racing. They're into cars. And if they're into anything, they're into putting themselves last. And uh, for once, one little voyage. Let's put dad first. Let's uh, head on down to Daytona, Florida. Let's dock the ship. Let's get into the Hornet. And let's play... Daytona USA for the mighty Sega Saturn oh yeah this isn't we're not playing on a Sega Saturn right uh, two reasons for that Sega Saturn's actually a little too primitive for me to hook up to the the navigator maybe one day uh, I by hook or by crook I probably could have figured it out but then I did a little research and I learned about this PlayStation 3 one uh, digital download only it was like 10 bucks um, you know, I, I probably bought this for a dollar, so let's like, you know, you're, you're paying retail to get it, but it's got something that this didn't. And, uh, when we reach that, I will show you, and I think you'll understand why I had to go with this PlayStation 3 version. Okay, well, more about that later. Uh, Daytona USA, play for about 10 minutes, we'll get back to the chest, and, uh, if you have any questions... We'll pull them out of the bag that tells no tale, or we'll get them live for you. Okay? It's uh, everything's on everything's on top of each other. Today. Daytona USA for uh, the PlayStation Three. All right, we got some video for you. We got some audio for you. Now, usually I don't start in the menu, and I certainly don't ever show you the demo, but my God. You're about to see why Daytona USA demands that you see the demo. Oh, where are my headphones? Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Let's go away. Daytona! Daytona! Let's go away! If you know it, come on, sing along! Daytona It's infectious Daytona Let's go away Daytona This is the fun part Where's the harp? All right. Now that all my dignity's gone, let's get right into a race. Boom! One, three tracks, two cars. I'm going automatic. Why? Because, man, am I a noob. Rolling Star! Rolling Star! You know, it just occurred to me, there's always a little bit of lag between how I perceive the game and how you guys perceive the game. So, I was probably way off singing that entire demo oh my god this is gonna be the pit what a debacle what a father's day debacle i'm sorry dad look hey you know your 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 son's an idiot but look there's cars hi sonic i mean come on <laughs> I, like i'm thinking about that now i might just have to cut that whole demo out oh boy uh uh, and again, I'm singing with it. Uh, you know, usually I cut the music out of these games because we're in 2016. Everybody wants their piece of the power on the internet. Um, oh. And uh, 
people who were doing soundtrack. Oh, I got so rammed there. And I just passed the pit stop. I'm probably going to have to pit. That sucks. Because you do uh, lose speed if you get if your car gets busted up. So anyway, yeah, I usually cut the audio for fear that that they're not going to air the they're not going to let me air the episode. I'm pitting. Uh, I think we're Worst case scenario is usually I can't monetize the video. You know, I can't put a commercial on. I don't really put commercials on the videos anyway. I mean, really, am I ever going to do this for a living? I don't think so. You know, but um, hopefully, hopefully they don't say, you know, uh, I don't know, you're, this, this video is completely illegal in Zimbabwe and can't be seen. You know, I would hate for... Uh, you know, say, I don't care if you know we don't ever you know make any money off this. That's not what this is about. That is about making video games. Um, how many laps do we have? It's six, eight laps. Two laps left. But I would hate uh, for us not to be able to watch the video at all. I think we're gonna be right. That's kind of why we do this in one take. Um, another thing is, you know, some people edit their videos. Sometimes I do. Not that often. But if you get if you get dinged on audio, somebody claims your your soundtrack, you can't edit the video at all. So I think that's probably what's gonna end up happening. We might get dinged on on audio. Oh no, I'm not gonna make it! G-A-M-E-O-B-E-R. G-A-M-E-O-B-E-R. Game over, game over, game over, game over. <laughs> I, I, ne I never do this, but can you see why anybody would like this game? All right, we'll get back into it. We'll get back into it. Daytona, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do another one of those. Just gonna go right back, right back into these. I want to do the same track. I know we can at least finish. We're gonna finish for dear old dad. We may finish somewhere around thirty or something. And, and I stop. <laughs> I want to sing to the sky. <laughs> uh, and I know that um. I know that, I, you know, I've been playing this this week. I just picked it up for the PlayStation 3. Plays like a dream. You know, plays... The Saturn is no slouch, though. Saturn plays just as fast and furious as this, okay? Just so you know. And it really kind of breaks my heart we're not playing it on there. But, as I said later, there was kind of a... Like, a make, made the deal for me feature here. We'll get into that later. Uh... But I know I have some times where I've completed the race. I don't know that I ever got first. But, you know, maybe we can beat our old time. That'd be pretty cool. And really, that's what racing's all about. That's why Daytona's fun. It's all about trying to shave a couple seconds off, your, off the time. I will never be... You know, competition material when it comes to Daytona USA. If I am with any game ever, but oh, but going up against your own time or your buddies can can be an absolute blast, and it'll really bring you back over and over. And I think it was a strong start for for the Sega Saturn to have this game. You know. Probably, I think it was the launch, almost the launch game. To be honest, I don't really know much about the Sega Saturn library. I, I got really lucky into finding what few games we do have for it. Not an easy system to collect for. But it's got a lot of personality and Daytona is a fine example of that. Now, it looks like I'm doing about 20 seconds a lap here. I think I'm gonna run out of steam. We've got two more laps to go here. Really gotta punch it. 
but we haven't had to pit. So as long as we can keep, keep a clean race going, and then that happens. Whoa, that could have been bad. All right, here we go. Last lap. Let's make the finish. This is NASCAR now. This is stock car racing. It's not necessarily about getting first. It's about finishing the race. You know, we're noobs here. What's up with the slot machine, by the way? Is there a lot of gambling in Daytona? Three, two, one. Yes! Stop! You place 16. Oh, V E R G A M E O V E R. Game of a game of a game of a game of a. All right! Okay, now, uh, as I was playing this week, I was putting in Raz, but we're on the ship now, so let's put in Cap'n. Oh, you know what? Even better? Oh boy, I'm running out of time, but I know I can do this. Let's put Dad in. Yeah, there you go. That one's for you, Dad. Can we check our times? Little scoreboards? How, how are we doing? Oh no, that's online. Some of the extras here. So it looks like you could actually play this online. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'd never do that. We're not hooked up for that. And frankly, this game's been out so long, I'd be kind of surprised... Uh, that being said, Daytona USA has already ha always had a very um, healthy following. I, I mean, have you ever seen those steering wheels? You know, people get those things are like a hundred for for video games. It's really like hundred dollars, like two hundred dollars. People get very invested into this stuff. Um, let's do one more track, and we'll do it on one that I'm not so good at. Advanced, and. You know, honestly, I'll be happy if I just complete it. Gentlemen, start your engines. Daytona. New music here. We got four laps. If we can finish this, I'll be very pleased. Only 20, 20 guys out there. We're going to do this race, and then we'll hit up the booty segment. Uh, this is a weird one. You're going to love this booty segment. I think you're going to fall in love. I know I did. I think you're going to be really happy about it. Oh, man. No way. What was that? Oh, now you see? You see she's really busted up. And this just happened. Oh, my God. So we're going to have to hit the pit. Wherever that is. Oh, God, stupid windmills distracted me. Should have stuck with the beginner course. Look at this wheel's about to pop off. Can I get a pit? All right, here's the pit. I can't believe I'm still in 18th. Pit it up! This has got to be the most dangerous job in the world, being the pit car, pit pit crew guy. I mean, you're not only having a speeding car come at you, you also have to deal with all these hydraulics and, like, drills and stuff in, like, 90 seconds. I mean, that's got to be really high-pressure stuff. I don't know how to do it. Let's go away. Total precision. I mean, and, and then you put the wheel on, Ron, guy's going to fly out the road. I don't know how those people get to sleep. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not too too ple too happy about the. Uh, I'm not too uh, positive positive about our uh, our outcome here. Ugh, it's a bad turner. You know, I I'm sure that probably I should be using regular gear instead of automatic but dude I I don't know how to do that at all seriously I'm so bad at it I'm, I'm the worst simulation driver <laughs> you know maybe if this thing had machine guns on the front oh boy that that uh, that was just for the that was for the ladies that was for the ladies 
Hey, feel free to leave your comments and jeers and insults and questions about how I got so bad at racing games in the chat. I'll address them at the end, the end of the show in the mailbag segment. But I think we're out of time, and that means... Oh, no, we got a little more time. And we're 19. We haven't even... We, you know what? I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, wait. Is there a checkpoint up here? Oh, my God, there is. Come on, Riz. Keep it together. We got about a lap and a half. We might actually be able to finish a race. Come on, baby. Do it for Dad! Wow, I've never actually heard the song go this one. Two, one. Game over, game over, game over, game over. Drag, dude, drag. You'll be e -R again. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, you don't have to belabor it. Thanks, creep. All right, we're losing audio. We're, we're coming back to the, the captain's quarters here. Tough game. Uh, you know, and this is actually a tough game to do, you know, for our little show, because is it watchable for 20 minutes? Is this a, a show, you know, is it, racing games in general, I always feel, are, are a hard uh, sell for, you know, what we do here. Because it really, you're just kind of looking at the, the, the butt of a car for, you know, 20 minutes. Um, but the thing about Daytona that... I wasn't, that made me less, can you hear that? I can still hear these guys singing. Hold on. Okay. They're good now. They've, take a break, guys. You did great singing. Uh, the reason I didn't have a problem with Daytona, aside from uh, the personal matter, personal uh, background with uh, my father, was the music. These guys, who, like, who was green lighting this music? For a racing game. What's going on in Japan? What's going on over at Sega of, uh, of Japan 15 years ago? That this was what they went with. But, you know, today, I'm not, for most Metro gamers, I'm, you know, they're probably rolling their eyes. This is so cliche. Because this is one of the most, you know, well-known, celebrated, memed soundtracks among uh, retro video gamers. And pretty much gamers in general. Uh, rolling start. You know, Daytona, everybody kind of knows it. But if you don't, I think uh, you got to be chuckling at that one. We'll hear a little more soon. Okay, but let's get into this. Uh, where are we at on time? I think we started at the 30. So we're 30, 33. So we're 33 minutes in. So that's not bad. We got about 20, 25 minutes. Okay, let's get into this. This is not a lot, but it's uh, it's quality over quantity, to be sure. It's also not video games, but it's the kind of lot that I think my father would actually appreciate because he uh, he's an engineer. He's a software engineer now, but there was a time where he was more of a, a hardware engineer, you know, back in the analog days before everything went digital. Uh, he had a real talent for building speakers. So I think, uh, you know, if you put a Nintendo in front of him, and you put a copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 in front of him, I think he'd be more interested in taking apart the Nintendo than trying to play through Super Mario Brothers. So that's why this is good, because this is all hardware that we're looking at today. Okay? And it's hardware that you don't see every day. That's the best part. Okay, so let's take a look. I went into a game store. Uh, this is not current, by the way. This is, didn't just happen. But it's actually been something that, that a story that I've pushed back because we had more co more um, current stuff coming in. We had bigger, frankly, bigger quantities coming in. Uh, I just felt like this little story, first of all, it deserves to be told. Um, and second of all, I think it really ties into what we're doing today. So, with all that being said, with all that preface, I'm sorry. I will stop dangling the carrot and we'll get to it. Okay. So I walked into a game store, and uh, game, you know, love these guys, good guys, and uh, one of my favorite people bought on the counter said, Cap and Raz, we were just talking, and then she just stops and she says, hey, by the way, this is probably something you'd be interested in. And she goes into the back room, and comes back, and the thing is in cellophane, it's about this size, and it's black, and she says it's Sega, 
And I'm like, oh, well, it must be like the Sega Model 3. The Sega Model 3, there were three Sega Genesis. The third and final Sega Genesis was about this big. Okay? But no, she says it's a Sega Genesis. And while it kind of is, it in no way is. My eyes widen as she shows me a Sega Nomad. Take a look at that bad boy, huh? Sega Nomad, are you out of your mind? What a behemoth, huh? She on? Yeah, she's on. What a behemoth. Uh, you can't see it very well. Maybe I'll work on the contrast for you. But she had this wrapped up. And she had uh, a couple things wrapped up with it. Where's the contrast? Brightness. There you go. She had this guy wrapped up with a, uh, a controller, an AV out, and a, uh, an AC adapter. And she's like, well, this just came in. It's technically a Sega Genesis because you can plug it into a TV and you can plug a controller into it. So I figured, well, we just sell it for the price of a Sega Genesis. And like my mouth drops. I'm like, and this is a reputable place. This isn't the kind of place that just buys trash. This isn't a thrift store. You know, this is, you. they're not going to buy it unless they, it's tested and it works. So I didn't even have to ask, does it work? And she had 30 bucks on it. $30. This goes for a little bit more. The controller, a lot more actually. The controller... This is a controller came with a really nice, uh, you know, it's nothing to write home about. It's just your basic uh, three button controller. I'm not going to bother with the autofocus, but you're going to have to trust me that little, that, there you go, you can see it. That little sticker there says $29.99. It also says Sega Nomad on it. So this guy was bundled up. She bundled it like she did every other Sega Genesis that ever came through the door with a controller and enough cords to get it to work. But obviously, this is so much more. Um, I The game that you see in here, Raiden Trad, you know, that's just one of my personal favorites that I popped in there. And it's been sitting in there ever since. I may have gotten this like two months ago. It's been a while. The other thing that made this an absolute steal was the fact that the battery pack came with it. Yeah, that's right. This thing wasn't packed in. When it when it released for whatever it released for, it's probably somewhere in the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range. It didn't come with the battery pack. Could you imagine paying retail for this thing? And then having to pay extra to get the battery pack? I don't I don't know what these retail for. But these days, these battery packs are crazy hard to come by. The battery pack alone is somewhere around the $40, $50 range. I'm not going to bother. There's like six double A's in there. Can you imagine that? $40, $50 just for this thing. So it all came packed together. It all works. I have had a little problem with the audio. I've noticed the audio has gone out a little bit. However, there is a headphone jack. And, uh, which does stereo output. And, uh, I believe it's stereo up, but I guess I don't really, I'm not really a, much of an audiophile, but I'm pretty sure it is. And, uh, you know, if the monitor goes out on you, well, you just plug it into your TV and you play there. Oh, and as for the controller, she had to pack, she had to pack an extra con controller in here because you can plug in the bottom. And then your your buddy can play two player. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the two of you sitting on the couch, knees knocking, and he's got the controller, and you're both playing off this this monitor. But hey, they built it in there. God bless them. So, can I get audio on it? Let's see if we can hear it.
It's just boring. I love Raiden. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. What a sweet game. Now, I'm playing this in reverse. It's, it's not easy. All right, that's enough of that. So, yeah, 30 bucks. I was in all, all day on that. What a great deal. I usually, uh, I mean, this is a long, long time sale ago. I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I actually watch this now and then. So thank you, Christina. I appreciate you uh, thinking of the old captain and, you know, not trying to, you know, just penny pinch on, on every little thing. You know, this was a great deal. Appreciate you, uh, try, you know, doing that. So that was a good deal. Okay, so this is what get, makes this story interesting. It's not interesting enough. This thing was sitting with Raiden Trad. I started carrying this around a little bit. I'm that much of a dork. And it's sitting in my car. And uh, it, it was there for, you know, at least a month. A month later, I finally get around to getting an oil change. All right, and I stop there, keep the keys in the car, I get out, you know, go in the office, go across the street to do a little shopping, wait for them to oil change. They finish up. And I come back to get my car, and the guy who does my oil change says, Hey, I saw that Sega Genesis that you guys sitting on the seat. And I'm like, Oh, that's actually a Sega Nomad. That's a portable Genesis. Isn't that crazy? And I'm like, Oh, yeah, that's pretty. I remember that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I used to play Sega Genesis. I don't play anymore, man. I know I got one sitting around, and I just don't do anything. Like, it's I'm sitting around, and it's got some games. You know, I just don't do anything with it. And. I said, oh, well, are you interested in are selling it? He's like, yeah, I'm in the middle of a move. This would be a good time to get rid of some stuff. You know, I just don't, I'll never play it again. So, yeah, whatever. I'm like, well, why don't you bring it here? I live right around this area, so I'll just stop here on the way to work. And whatever you got, you know, we'll make a deal. And he's like, all right. So I'm already like, sweet games and a genesis the genesis you know we have a genesis that's no big deal but games are always great to find okay uh or at least you know enough to to get me interested so i showed up uh the next monday when he said he'd be there and he went to his car which was like filled with stuff you know how what a nightmare it is living when you're in the middle of moving it's like you're a gypsy uh, this guy was going through it. So his the whole back of his, his truck was just filled with crap. And he starts digging through it. And he finds the Sega Genesis. And he's like digging around a little more. And this I'm like, oh no. Like he, I see he's just got the Genesis loose. No box. Which makes me believe there's probably not going to be any games either. And I had done this uh, trick that I learned from uh, Bithead1000 one of my favorite YouTubers, where I put like $20 in one pocket and like $10 in another and like $5 in the back. And I knew where the, the money was so I could say, you know, this is all I brought or that's, it's an old garage sale trick. And in this case, it really wouldn't apply because it'd be pretty stupid for me to go to a deal. I'm already, you know, there, uh, he already knows I'm coming and I've come with no money. That would just be stupid. So I don't even know why I did this, but anyway, Side the point. Uh, he he shows me this Genesis, and then I I start to be really happy that I showed up. This is why. Sega Genesis with a Sega CD attached. The Sega CD Model One. A system we have never had in the hold. Look at my stupid beer bouncing. That's so gross. Uh, we've never had one of these. It's the, pretty much the last Sega system that we, you know, don't have. We have a couple of a couple of weird variants out there, but they're just like other models. Sega Genesis. Uh, the Sega CD though we never had. And the only thing that was coming, out, the only thing that he had, no games. He had this monstrosity, and then he had two, two AC adapters, 
plugging into it. And I, I did not stutter. To get this thing up and running, you actually have to plug two separate fat AC adapters, like those old fat AC adapters, into the back of these guys and then into an outlet. And good luck trying to get two AC of those big fat AC adapters into the same outlet. Or a power strip for that matter. It's one of the worst designed Sega or like game systems out there. And one that I never really thought I well, I certainly knew I wasn't gonna pay retail for. Uh but I was like shocked. So alright, I'll stop showing you the, the most boring side. So look at you know the this the Sega Genesis stands on top. You've got this uh, Sega tray here and then you've got a couple of uh, status buttons here that would light up for you okay provided you had it all now I don't think it's a, that hard to find any of the cords for this and most of them we have because half of it's Sega Genesis um, but the problem is is when I plugged it in the Sega CD these lights I believe are supposed to come on as soon as it gets power or at least maybe as soon as the Genesis gets turned on I don't know for sure but what I do know is I've yet to be able to get this thing to power on what's really torturous about that is this this tray is mechanical and unless I can get power in there I can't open it up to see if there's a game in there I don't think there is I mean I, I would assume this has got to be it's going to be like a $150 RPG that I'm shaking in there. No, I don't. This guy was not the... This guy didn't seem like the... <laughs> the role-playing type. But, uh... I don't know. Nonetheless, I was kind of interested. He He's like, what do you want to do on it? I'm like, well, I don't know if it works. I have no idea. I'll give you 10 bucks. And he took the $10. And I was really happy with that. Even... If this guy isn't working, the Genesis is working just fine. Uh, Model 1s are always nice to have, especially because they have that, that banging headphone jack. I always love that. And if anything, the Sega CD piece is just, it's just a beautiful little piece. Am I ever going to meet anybody who knows how to work these things? I have no idea. I actually, I mean, I could, I had a hard time even finding a video that would tell me concretely how to get this guy started so so there you go you had ten dollars on this guy and uh, thirty dollars on the nomad in addition to the two AC adapters that were plugged into this guy he had a uh, another Sega Genesis controller with uh, one of the worst frayed cords I'd ever seen so this, uh, I plugged this thing, obviously it's not working. So this is garbage. Um, so there you go, 10 bucks on the Sega CD. Kind of doubt it works. I think the Genesis makes up for that. Uh, but just to have that all together, it's a gorgeous piece. So I was more than happy to pay 10 on it. So that's what we got. Uh, quality over quantity, in my opinion. I never thought we'd have a Sega CD, especially under those circumstances. And now we have one. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so where are we at here? We started at 33 and we're at 18. So we have 15 minutes left in the show. Uh, let's, uh, let's try a couple more tracks on Daytona. There's this one track that I've never tried, which is Expert. Uh, I mean, I'll be lucky if the car can even make it to the pit. But we'll give it a shot. Hey, who knows, maybe there's a song. And then there's one other final surprise I want to show you that's exclusive to the, uh, the download version, which is what we're playing, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 version. Um, so let's get back to it. Let me arm my harp of transition here. Stay Tony USA. This one's for you, Dad. Yeah, let's, let's try this advanced uh, track. Actually, I want to open with a regular track. This this track these tracks are just too much fun. I want to go one more time. Here. Gentlemen, start your, start your engines. engines. Start. Go. I'm going. Oh. 
This uh, car, by the way, the Hornet that, that we're uh, driving, this is like the most iconic Sega car in history. Of all, every, any Sega game ever made, you know, we're talking vehicles here. The Hornet's basically the Sonic of Sega. And it, it's, it's one of the most well-known cars, recognized cars in video games in general. Uh, I don't know what I would put over it. I don't know, not not many. You know, there are a few games that that have so few cars that the car itself almost becomes, a, you know, like a showpiece, like the main character. The Hornet's definitely main. You got that uh, that other car for for people who actually know how to drive. I don't even know what that one's called, but the Hornet. If you know Sega, you know video games. You know the Hornet. And one of the funniest side pieces, side notes of the Hornet, one of the coolest appearances of the Hornet, is in this game called Fighters Megamix, again, for the Sega Saturn. And Fighters Megamix kind of came out in that time when there were a lot of crossover fighters, like Capcom versus SNK, Marvel versus Capcom, etc. And Sega had to have their own crossover, so they made Fighters Megamix. It had uh, a number of virtual fighter characters, a number of fighting Viper characters, and then a couple of characters that from games that weren't fighting games. One of them being, believe it or not, the Hornet. So imagine the Hornet going up on its two, two uh, hind wheels, trying to be as bipedal as possible, and then using its front wheels <laughs> to punch out, like, you know, uh, to punch out, like, you know, what? Uh, now I'm blanking on every virtual fighter character. Uh, J Jane? <laughs> I, I was thinking of Kira, but I don't think that's right. That's the, like, the main guy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, you have a racing car, NASCAR fighting in a 3D fighting game. Pretty funny stuff. But you know, that's Sega all over. Alright Sonic, this is it pal. Last tra last rap. Two, one, oh! Woo! That was close. G, A, M, E. Oh, I'm, right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop because I'm. I know. Now, your name with the there you go, Dad. Fifth place. Not bad. Not too shabby. I know that I'm totally not singing in sync with these guys. I wish I thought of that earlier. It's got. That's gotta be. That's gonna be the most embarrassing thing to relive. Okay. Uh, let's try one more track. Let's try one more track here. And I'm playing on normal mode. I tried to play on arcade. It's really hard. We'll play that tough. This is only two laps. Never played this one. Start your engine. We'll give it a go and then we'll do the mailbag. If you got a question, feel free to leave it. I gotta tell you, it may as well be Daytona in in the captain's quarters. I am like, uh, oh lord! Uh, we got a pit. Can I get a can I get a pit? Uh, oh my god, this is humiliating. Song's pretty good though. I don't think I've heard this one. Oh man, this is very outrun. Yeah, I hate to say it, but this is this Daytona or is this San Francisco? Whoa! 
I mean, it is called Daytona USA. Is Daytona uh, the name of stock car racing? Is that a brand aside from uh, the city of Daytona? I don't know. It's a race again. There's not a lot of lore here. What can I say? I'm, I'm pretty sure I, that's a, it's assumed you would know that. Can I get a pit? Did I miss it? I bet I did. My poor car is so beat up. This track is long. Oh, look, it's a space shuttle. All right, we're in Daytona. They don't have space shuttles in, in San Francisco, that's for sure. If it was a trolley, that'd be one thing. Oh, cool, a pirate ship! All right, I got distracted by the pirate ship. <laughs> and that's probably gonna cost us, oh wait, we got a, we got a checkpoint, okay. Uh, by the left, there's no way we're gonna make it. Was that the pit? Oh, that was the pit. See, that's the thing about racing games. You know, fighting games, you can kind of... Wait, did, did that say pit road? Am I on pit road? No. Whoa! Oh, God. Fighting games, you can fake your way through it. Racing games, you better know these... You better know where the critical stuff are, otherwise you're out. I wonder who that is. Oh, I bet that's a virtual fighter. That looks like Jeffrey. Uh, I finally remember the name of virtual fighter. Whoa! Oh, there's another checkpoint. I don't know. We may actually be able to finish. We may actually finish here. Let's see. Oh, God. Time extension. Extend my time, sir. Are you singing at home? You gotta at least be bopping your head. Whoa! Oh my god. Two. One. Woo! Are they singing rolling start? Oh! That's it. That's it. You're not coming back from that, but we will see this. Might see the pirate ship one more time. Show me the pirate ship! No. <laughs> Alright. All right, that's all she wrote. Yeah. Game over, 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 game over. All right, thank you, Daytona. Thank you very much. It was a blast. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I just want to show you this real quick. Especially since I've been telling you I was going to... So this is the reason that this, the PlayStation 3 version had to be shown. Okay, just a little known fact. Karaoke. We got the karaoke mode here. Alright, check this out. Uh, beginner. Automatic. Start your engines. Gentlemen, clear your throats. Dude. <laughs> Here we go. Daytona! Daytona! Let's go away! Daytona! Daytona! Let's go away! Oh, I missed that one. Day. Hey, hey. Way, hey, hey. Way, hey. Way, hey, hey. Okay, alright. <laughs> All right, we'll wreck the car. Hold on, one, one big wreck. I mean, singing and driving at the same time. Give it a shot. Duh, let's go. I see Sonic. Boom. All right, we're done. Thank you. I know. Take control of the car. Karaoke mode, huh?
Again, I was probably way off there. Not only in key. Um, I gotta designate like a place to put the hat back here. It's not like yeah, I'm right in front of the camera grabbing my hat. Uh, I'm looking at the playback of that right now. Yeah, that's look like an idiot. <laughs> what else is new? Um, yeah, that karaoke mode they put that in just for the PlayStation Three, and why? Because that's how that's how well received and loved this soundtrack is. So, and it's still playing. Can we get can we get out of this? I doubt it. We got a wireless controller. There you go. It's done. Okay, let's uh, check. Doesn't look like we have any live questions, but we do have a question sitting in the mail, the the bag that tells no tales. Let's take a look here. If you have a question, you can leave it as a comment or uh, write it to gaminggallion at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Okay, so this comes from uh, Loco Lorenzo, and he writes, Dear Cap and Res, what in your opinion uh, is a game that has the most, that screams the most America? America! <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, the first one that comes to mind is not one that I would pick, because I didn't really play it. But, uh, again, second time I, I mentioned Bithem 1000 today, but uh, he introduced me really to a game called Total Carnage. And Total Carnage is uh, a game you may not know very much, but you probably know it's prequel, which was Smash TV. It plays exactly like Smash TV. It's a top-down shooter. You got one joystick to move your character and one joystick to shoot in eight directions. And the only difference, the only real difference between Total Carnage and Smash TV is Smash TV took place in a game show where you were held captive. And Total Carnage is you were this uh, hostage situation uh, commando crew of two guys who were just going through these levels. Same controls, just instead of being stuck in a room, you actually moved along and blew up uh, vehicles and whatnot and um, it's very America because it's like it's two muscle bound guys with their shirts off they've got rocket launchers and machine guns and they're picking up power-ups like money and uh, chicks with cleavage and uh, there's American flags all over the place extremely American game uh, I personally when you're talking America, uh, you know, I'd probably give it to like, like a Bigfoot game, maybe mo one of the mo many Monster Jams for the PS2. I just feel like uh, there's nothing more American than giant uh, cars with with huge wheels, huge unnecessarily large wheels. That really uh, that strikes the America in me. I'd also give it up to Smash TV a lot. The idea of there being in this game show uh, predicated on violence. Yeah, I totally could see that. You know, when you get money for for wasting, you know, hundreds of guys, totally could see that. Um, yeah, I think I'd give it up to Bigfoot personally, though. Just because for me, it, it doesn't get more American than, than Bigfoot. So there you go. Thanks for the question. I really like that one. Um, and, you know, Independence Day is coming up, so who knows what kind of America game we end up sailing. Um, but we'll see. So anyway, uh, that's it. I think we uh, we ran out of time. Thanks a lot, Dad, for being there for me all those years, and my sister and my mother. Thanks for the patience, and uh, thanks for always putting yourself last. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Maybe you'll teach me sometime. All right, so that's it. Do something nice for your dad. You and I are going to play make-believe next time. More adventures to be had, more surprises, and by God, more loot. So I'll see you later. Until next time.
and well and adieu to ye Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to sail back to Daytona. <laughs> I should have rehearsed that. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Keep your powder dry, daddies. <laughs>